All right, all right, all right, and welcome back to another exciting episode of Planet I'm your host, Sean, and my friends is Brian over there. Hello. How are you today, my friend? I'm doing all right. How about yourself? Man, I'm fantastical as always. Fantastical. Just uh, finished up our uh, Ahsoka Episode 3 reaction video, so that should be up shortly for you guys. Before you we'll see this, a, it will be out there. Have a little more news about Disney later on in the show. Yeah, yeah. Brian's excited about this Disney talk. I can't wait. To see I what am. I say. It's, he, it's he's ready interesting. To go. Yeah. Um, but before we get to all that, man, I just want to ask you guys to please hit the subscribe button. And if you like what you see, give us a like as well. Leave us a comment. We always want to hear from you. So with that out of the way, we can get started. And with that... Yay! I'll ask you, what about Starfield, man? Big talk. What about Starfield, man? Yeah, there is a lot of talk. A lot of big talk. Uh, you know, obviously, uh, this game has been in development forever, right? 20 years. Um, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> feels like it. This is, the big, <laughs> this is their first thing in 20 years. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, uh, everybody's giving them kudos, and they're very thankful and, and whatnot. Um, I don't know. Uh, I am not in a position to play it, so. Well, I will be in a position to play it when it goes, when it goes regular live. It is right. in pre-release mode right now, so for five days... People are getting to play it who paid uh, for the premium version. I forget what you call it, or the Constellation version, which comes with a right. kick-ass watch. And, you know, I saw the price of that. It was $299, and I saw that watch, and I thought, fucking hey, that's actually a damn good deal. Because that watch yeah. looked really nice. Now, it may be a piece of shit. I don't know. <laughs> but, I mean, you figure well, a game. The they're, you're gonna... They can look great, but... It's all about the interior. <laughs> That's right, man. It's got to hold up. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, but you figure the game in that configuration, it's like a hundred dollar mm -hmm. version of the game. So there's a hundred bucks right there. So, you know, a $199 watch. I don't know. It didn't seem bad if it's a good watch again. I don't know who made right. it. And if, if there's information out there, which I'm sure there is, it was not important enough for me to go look. It just looked <laughs> right. cool. Man. Um, but yeah, so nine five and nine six, it'll be coming out to like for instance, I didn't pay for anything. I've got the uh, Xbox Game Pass Ultimate, and they're actually giving it to the Ultimate subscribers from the get go. Yep. So that's cool. Were they doing something on PS Five too? I doubt it. God, I doubt it. You'll have to look that up. I kind of doubt it too. But I, I thought I had that's heard an something. exclusive because that's one right. of those things that Microsoft was like roping in. I was even surprised that that was like a AMD deal too, and not an Nvidia deal. Yeah. Okay. I see what I was thinking. It was a a conversation. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, I mean that's that's like the. Bungie, Budgie, or something like that. You know, it's like hell no, this shit's not going to show up on PlayStation, right? But uh, I've watched a couple videos on it. I've already seen some stuff on like what not to do. So I guess that'll be a little helpful when I get into it. Uh, I there is an already a pirated version out there. Believe it or not, you can't get online with it. But uh, I mean, you know, if you want to check out the game, it's it's out there. I was so close to just wanting to try it so bad. Right. <laughs> ah, this is what happens when you give pre-releases out, man. You create envy. Yep. But, Game uh, envy. Oh, man. And sometimes, too, when I'm... Especially when you know you can get a hold of the code. And it, it, the, the sad part about it is the game's sitting on my fucking hard drive right now. Yeah. It's preloaded right here, right now, and I can't even do anything with it. And it's freaking huge, right? Oh, dude, 140 gigabytes. And I think uh, Jay, our buddy Jay, he had posted something about, did you see the the day one patch? What did it, yeah. what did it say was the day one patch size? I forget what it said. Uh, I mean, it was multiple gigs, I'm sure. Yeah, I, I want to say it was almost 100 gigs again, but I could be wrong about that. Let's see. Day gigs. one. 
Starfield Day 1 update patch size is 15.48 gigabytes. Wow. Compared to what, how big the game is, though, that's a drop in the bucket. But, you know, dude, it was only a few years ago, then that's what how big a, you know, a giant game would have been 15 gigs. Yeah. That's a big game. But well, and more. I mean, it's becoming more and more problematic on consoles, right? Oh, shit, yeah, dude. Everybody thought, oh, man, I got a one terabyte hard drive. I ought to be good to go for a minute. Fuck no, dude. Nope. I got like three games on mine. It's already mm -hmm. fucking choking out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, it's ridiculous, dude. These games, and I love it. I Don't get me wrong. I love the beauty of these games, but it's not going to get any better. And thank God SSD prices are coming down. Right. You can actually get some, you know, two gig, four gig drives for not ridiculous prices anymore, which helps. You know, I'd say one gig, Tara. but shh. I'm sorry, Tara. Yeah, thank you. Uh, <laughs> You're welcome. I'm old as fuck. You know, I'm surprised <laughs> I didn't say, you know, bytes or megabytes <laughs> or some shit like that. You can get a one meg drive for nothing. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. God damn. I can't believe I did. But yeah, terabyte. Yeah, like I'd say ter one terabyte drive, but. Yeah. It don't last, man. It don't last. Well, I mean, for the longest time, that's the only thing you really could get, right? It was the biggest thing that you could get because everybody was doing the NVMEs with uh, 256, 512, and 1 terabyte. Yeah. yeah, like just using them to boot and then using spindle drives to hold data. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. it's It it just kills me how long that we've had spindle drives around, and they've been such a bottleneck. Yeah. They have throttled us for years. When I finally got my first SSD, oh my God, it's like ripping your clothes off, man. <laughs> just like, I'm free to be yeah. as fast as I want to be. Oh. I don't know. Sometimes I do miss the days of like hitting the button on my computer, going out back to have a smoke and, you know, getting back and it's just finished loading. <laughs> yeah, man. I used to, I remember being a uh, tech back in the, it was like right out of high school. So it was like 95, 96. And mm. I used to sit there and wonder, Man, when I was loading Windows 95, you know, it was like day after day I was loading this shit up off a floppy drive. And, right. Uh, Oof. 13 disc, yeah, it was brutal. Yeah. Eventually they came out with the CD, thank God. <laughs> but uh, I just remember lo it loading up and I thought, man, I wonder one day, like if I'm ever going to see this bar, because this bar still exists to this day, you know, it's the same bar, you, you know, if you like under the hood, it's going on and you can see it up to like, I don't know, maybe XP or something like that. Maybe even past there. Yeah. But uh, it's like, I wonder if this will ever go any faster. Just this loading and stuff. And it did get to a point where finally it just went zip, 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 zip. And it's never been able to go any faster than that. Right. I remember that point. Like, uh, I, I, I kind of like, I was working with Floppy before I got into the industry. But once I got into the industry... CD-ROMs weren't really the thing, but they were there, right? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I did, really didn't experience a lot of that first gen of, like, floppy in, floppy out, etc. But it did seem to take forever. And I do recall, like, once they opened up, really it felt like once they opened up the cache on the main board, that's when we saw a huge difference. Oh yeah, but it was also the the cache on the drives too. Yeah, well, when and then when they put the cache on and start putting it on the CPU, that's when we everything, all these little tricks. They finally, you know, it's taking so long. It seems like so long to get to this point. We finally got computers that just so fast that we're just, speed. At least yeah. the CPUs were just shooting ourselves in the foot. Well, I mean, the point of your story earlier is now with the SSD drive, you can just see it go psh, done. Yeah, I mean it's. <clears throat> And and then the throughput that we have available to us, like with the PCIe five and stuff, like we're so far from even hitting the the top end of that, yeah, you know, that uh, that pipe. That I don't know. We'll be in six or seven before you know. There's always there's just always the next upgrade all before we even max out what we had, right. But uh, anyway, that was way off on a tangent to say Starfield is fucking huge. Um, yes. And, I, you know, I got to thinking, like, no, I don't know how many people still get their games on disc. I, I wanted the Xbox Series X because it still had a, drive, a disc drive in it. Yeah. Um, and because I had some stuff that was on disc that I wanted to play. But, like, how many discs could this thing be? I mean, like, they got their Blu-rays, obviously. So, I mean, 
I guess you could get it on. What you'd have to have three Blu-rays, I think, right? Unless I they think. see, I'm behind too because I don't know what kind of compression technologies they have. Same. They might be able to slap way more than they used to could on a Blu-ray. I have no idea. I used to be like yeah. all over that kind of thing when I was ripping DVDs and stuff and knowing. But I, I, I stopped doing that like right when Blu-rays came out, man. I didn't have anything that could even touch high definition, so right. I wouldn't even, wouldn't even messing with it yet. And now it's already man. almost becoming disappeared. You know, it's like not even a thing almost. I was messing around with some of that stuff with Jay back in the day, and um, man, he got some really good looking shit off of like regular DVDs. Like if you know what you're doing with Handbrake oh, yeah. and some other tools, too. yeah. You get that raw data, and it'll work. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was very anal about, you know, my bit rates and, and what I was ripping, uh, what containers I was putting them in. I know how anal he is about shit, and I, I'm probably equally as anal about it. Yeah. If not, well, in some cases, not as much, because I know how he can be extra. <laughs> yeah, like, just like it has to be an MP4, nothing else. Everybody's got their little extra here. Sure, there, no, yeah, everybody likes what they like. That's for true. Yeah. That's for true. But, uh, yeah, this game, I mean, I haven't heard anything really negative about it yet. Have you? No, and I really don't expect to. Video out there, man, of just, I was pissed that people already had, you know, videos out. And, I mean, it's only been out for, what, two days? Yeah. Officially, right? And these are not press people. Like, I have seen tons of videos with 100-plus hours of play, and I'm like, how the fuck do you... Because, that, that, like, we only have 24 hours in a day. It's only been two days. I expect no more than 48 hours of gameplay, except for people who had access to it, like press access right. or something like that. I think they're lying, man. They're giving, like, Hulk Hogan numbers and shit. I swear <laughs> he, he claims to have wrestled, like, 400 days out of the year or something. <laughs> Sounds like the Hogan. <laughs> like somehow you going back through uh by plane going around the world or something through Australia, like he managed to wrestle an extra day. Getting two days at the one. I don't know. It's just some crazy ass Hulk Hulk Hulkster bullshit for sure. Yeah. Um What else we got? Well, I don't know. I'm having a fucking hot flash right now. Wish Ruh-roh. I had my fan on. So, dude, our buddy Jay, again, I posted something about this Atari 2600, and I, he posted new old stock, and I didn't know if he was kidding or not, so I was curious about it. Oh, man, they've remade the Atari 2600. It's the 2600 Plus. Have you heard right. about it? I have. I haven't really checked it out, but, I mean, it's an Atari, dude. <laughs> well, I thought, well, I mean, you know, I just wrote on there about it, and then I thought, well, maybe I need to know about it, because I, I was curious whether or not he was questioning whether it was new old stock or making a joke. He, I've later found out he was making a joke. but Right. Um, yeah, no, it's brand new, man. And in fact, the plus part of it is it plays 7,800 cartridges as well. Oh, wow. Yeah, so like that's a pretty cool bonus because 7,800s were, were uh, basically like Nintendo 8-bit level games. Right. I mean, like it wasn't terrible from back in the day. You weren't playing tanks anymore. Yeah, it wasn't. You know, like, <laughs> I mean, like, dude, even fifty two hundred wasn't terrible. But I find that interesting, though. That, uh, but I believe fifty two hundred was a whole other beast. I guess is that why they they don't have access to? I'm, I'm curious about that actually. I want to say the architecture was different. Yeah, I don't know, I, and I have watched in the last year, so I've forgotten already. I've watched stuff on those three consoles. I'm going to yeah. have to go specifically look because now I'm curious. Um, I remember that it didn't do that well. Yeah. I do know that. Of course, by the time the 7800s came out too, like the whole bottom had fallen out of the industry. I remember going, because my mom had got me a 2600 for cheap when that was going on because they had the new ones out, the brand new ones that were like small and uh, slender at the mm-hmm. front. And... Uh, you slim could go, line. Yeah, slim line, basically. And you could go to the toy store, and they just had these huge bins of just tons and tons of fucking 2,600 games, 5,200 games, 7,800 games. And I remember looking at some of the 7,800 games going, damn, these these don't look half bad on the back of the box and shit. And I'm thinking, man, I wish I had one of these 7,800s. But nobody I knew had a, one had a 5,200 ever, and nobody I knew ever had a 7,800. Right. I mean, like, it was... A, 
I would love to see it, but I mean, honestly, it was 2600 to Nintendo. That's what happened for everybody I know. Well, here's here's how I feel about it. Like when it was uh well, I'm going to lose my nerd cred. What was it before Atari? Well, you had Pong, you had the Odyssey. No, what was before uh the 2600, the Atari 2600? Well, it was just called the VCS, but it's the same thing. Nope, there's something else I'm thinking about. It was another gaming system. ColecoVision? Yeah, you had ColecoVision, you had the Odyssey. The Odyssey, yes. So, like, when all of that was out, it was kind of like fresh new stuff, right? Um, yeah. So everybody was into it, and, uh, you know, even my dad got into it, right? My My dad had an Atari, and... I watched him play hours and hours of Pac-Man. Yeah. Um, but that kind of wore off. You can't expect someone of, you know, our age is different now, but back then in the, you know, 70s, whatever, you can't expect, like, a middle-aged person to continue to stay invested into these marginal increases yeah. in performance yeah, and, and whatnot. Yeah, it was definitely something that was geared, going to be for the kids. Yeah, and again, uh, not the best times financially. No, so, the 80s were, were rough times. Uh, yeah, I think that that's probably what happened. And when the Nintendo came out is when people started having money in their wallets again. It was, and it was visually appealing. Plus, yeah. they were smart when they came out, you know, because... The Famicom over there and our Nintendo looked totally different. It was an entertainment system. It was designed to look like a VCR mm -hmm. and look like part of your entertainment system. Yeah. So, uh, I know. It was huge. It went over, man. It went over so big. I'd never forget it, man. It was mania. Nintendo yeah. mania. I remember it too, man. I never subscribed to Nintendo Power, but I read many yeah, of them. I never did either. <laughs> but Because all my friends had them, man. I just looked through their shit. Yep. Of course, I never had my own Nintendo either, man. Mom, mm -hmm. I had one of those mothers, man, that, that insisted that uh, I earn everything, you know, and I could never earn a hundred bucks. And that was the cheapest Nintendo I could get. By the time they they finally had come out with a hundred dollar one, it was like eighty seven. Yeah. And uh, they had like a ninety nine dollar bundle. Finally, after being out for two years, mm -hmm. and I still couldn't even afford that. I had twenty dollars. That was the most I could mm -hmm. save up, man. There was no way. I was like going to buy the next biggest G.I. Joe vehicle I could get for 20 bucks. <laughs> right. <laughs> or Transformer or something. But, uh, yeah. So, uh, for $129.99, a new Atari can be yours. And it comes with a cartridge that has 10 games on it. And it was, look, I noticed on the cartridge, I think it uses dip switches, bro. Really? Yeah, because on the front of the cartridge, it had dip switch patterns for each game, or it looked like dip huh. switch patterns for each game, because each one was unique. So, yeah, I'm guessing it's going a little old school in that regard, too. Um, That's weird. I think anybody who was around for the original Ataris would laugh at the idea of paying 100 bucks for another Atari system. Oh, bro, 130 bucks even. Man. <laughs> right. I mean, dude, yeah, that's stiff. That really yeah. is stiff. Uh, did I mention it has HDMI as well? You did not. Yeah, it has HDMI. The fuck are you going to do with HDMI on an Atari system? Well, I mean, that's you have Connectivity, to have it. No, it's I actually guess. very smart, bro. It's very smart, actually, because okay. uh, composite. That old Atari looks like shit on our modern stuff. Our right. Modern. That's why everybody's going to try and find a, you know, and have an old TV in the house just for that stuff. Um, yeah, it looks horrible, and they've they've done like software, try and do software fixes, and it's just eh. Yeah. It doesn't look it doesn't look so good. So, uh, well, you yeah, need it for connectivity, but like, just, just so much wasted bandwidth, right? Oh yeah, I mean it's <laughs> it's stupid. Other than it just gets it to look halfway decent on your TV, you know? right? Um, and hopefully, I you know I don't know if they had to change anything in these games. These games were so blocky and stuff. I don't think they're going to have any issues like they were with something like a, you know, like a Nintendo eight bit system or maybe something even better like sixteen or thirty two bit systems. You never know, man. I don't. And I won't know because I won't have one. And I'm sure yeah. there'll be a thousand fucking uh, videos on YouTube about it when it comes. Well, it is out. I guess you can get it right now. It looked like it said I it think was in so. stock. Yeah. Yeah. 130 bucks, though, man. Jesus Christ. Right. <laughs> For one cartridge with 10 games and one controller. No, Brutal. thanks. Brutal. 
<laughs> um, so, you know, I uh, we've mentioned before that I like Justified very much. The original yeah. show, Justified. We've talked about the uh, the new show, which I thought was just a miniseries. Right. I thought it was just three episodes. And then the other day, I'm trolling around, and I saw on one of the uh, sites that I get on that it is up to episode eight now. Wow. Yeah, so I'm like, okay. Um, damn, do I want to reevaluate this? Because I, so far, have just not even been wanting to watch it. And yeah. I'm wondering if given that kind of length of time can they get any better can it can it grow on me i have been watching uh the original series yeah and i'm up to season four now i think oh good you know we finished it i don't know if i ever mentioned that we finished it you about did. a week or two ago uh yeah i'm looking at hulu right now it does look like it is just eight eight and out huh usually yeah usually they'll have the other episodes not listed yet but they'll have the numbers there right uh, you might be able to find a little bit more info. But still, I mean, eight episodes, that doesn't scream miniseries to me unless they're just saying, the, calling it that because it's a one-off. I don't know. Right. Um, I don't know. I just... I'm not feeling it, man. I don't think it really... I don't really think it... should have the justified name on it at all. Hmm. And I mean, I've told you the the history behind what it's based off of, and I mean, it is not a Raylan vehicle, right? Period. So, well, I mean, the the book was City Primeval, right? Yes, but not um, Raylan, right? Nothing yeah. to do with him. Yeah. So I don't I don't know. Uh, and another thing is like looking back uh, on what I've seen so far, getting back to season four. Uh, what you see is this great story uh, in the first season about this marshal who is trigger happy and has to start questioning himself about you know all this shit that goes down when he's involved. Uh, and then in the second season, you see some amazing acting, right? Yeah. Uh, third season, you start to see some more stars, and they kind of that I, I feel like that's where they start to kind of gloss over. Uh, the whole like the, it, it's like they were straining to to bring up the bad boy versus the marshal part, right? Yeah. Well, they just have to keep finding new bad boys versus the marshal. Well, no, no, no. I'm talking about Raylan himself being a bad oh, boy. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, he, he was he was walking the tightrope there a lot of times. I mean, he all but killed you know wanted to kill Boyd and just decided. He finally thought better of it right at the last second, but yeah, um, I don't know. I just I don't know what kind. Of, maybe I should look and see what kind of reviews it's gotten now that it's all come out. But I and I don't know that that'll be right because these people, a lot of people, will just be watching it with new eyes. Yeah, and not even IMDb has it at seven six of ten, um, mm. and I really expect something like that. Uh, you know. A relaunch with the same main character, popular franchise. I would expect it to be higher, personally. Uh, even on IMDb. I wish they'd make a lot of Longmire. I was glad that got saved back in the day by Netflix. That was a Ooh. good show. A lot of one stars. Yeah, see what I mean, man? I don't know where this is from, but it's got a 2.4 star rating somewhere yeah, that seems appropriate for what i've seen so far yeah i'm just not digging it man not good at all but anyway that's enough about justify because it's just negative and i don't <laughs> I don't care for that man it's, it, because it's just like i said about the deadwood movie man it just leaves me with the it's a shame you know i'm so excited to know that it's out there and then i just get left wanting and disappointed and talking bad about it and nothing good comes from that well, I just knew in the movie, as soon as I saw the doc, I was like, yeah, this is going to suck. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to get fulfilled. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They just weren't weren't hitting on all cylinders. And yeah. so we have another big franchise about to come out with its Breaking Bad 2. Nope. Lightning in a Bottle Twice? Nope. It's a fan video. 
Oh, I'm fucking busted again, dude. Yep. Damn, dude. Well, here's the thing. I did watch the video, and up until the, they start doing some weird shit about halfway through of it, but up until that point, it is really believable. What like, the fuck, man? It is edited well. It's great shots, great composition. Like the guy knows what he, or knew what he was doing in the beginning. Or girl, who, but I, who knows? But I swear I was on AMC's YouTube page. Yeah, well, I I think they've adopted it. That's bullshit. Uh, oh, but the thing is, they? you you may be remembering that at the end of it, it does have like the AMC logo and music and all that other stuff. It's it's presented as if it were presented by AMC. Yeah. But, yeah, man, okay. That's fool me twice, shame on me. Fool me twice, shame on me. If, if you watch the whole clip, uh, like later on, um, the old guy, Mike, what's that his name? Yeah, I don't even remember now. The old guy that was in security oh, yeah, and all this other stuff. You mean the guy that went to uh, Better Call Saul? Yeah. Yeah. yeah anyway. Mike, I think, yeah, yeah, is. Sounds they had a scene where he was like getting jumped by some young kids and he does like this forward flip that was totally unrealistic. Oh. And it just gets worse and worse after that. Like people start shooting lasers out of their eyes. Oh, and whatnot. come on. Yeah, see, I didn't get through the whole thing because I was just blown yeah. away. I just, well, I'll be damned, man. I get mad I, about I, shit like that because I feel like I'm like talking about something newsworthy and next thing I know, I've been fucking pranked, man. Right. Well, I'll, I'll say this. Like, I'm glad that they added the bullshit into the end because that's what made it obvious, yeah. right? And, and they needed to do that. But up until like about halfway, maybe a little bit before that, like everything was like, are, are they really doing another Breaking Bad? But it was all shots from like other franchises, other yeah, stuff. Yeah, because I thought Cranston was sitting there talking about it and shit. Yeah, it was well done. They fooled me. It was. I ain't even going to lie, man. They fooled yeah. me. What was the other one I got fooled by recently? Shit, what was that? Back to the Future? Yeah, Back to the Future 4 or whatever. Was yeah. That what it was? Yeah. Well, at least I know Beetlejuice 2 is real. <laughs> that is really happening. <coughs> They're actually at the same place. Rebuilt. They've rebuilt all the shit. Really? Yeah. Cool. I actually uh, saw a guy on YouTube channel. He went out there. Man. And of course, the house, the actual house was torn down because it was not a real house, and they had to tear it down by law. So yeah. they rebuilt the house on the hill that it sat on and uh there is a town and they had to rebuild the bridge the covered bridge and the town the places that were some of the buildings you saw in the town oh man it looked horrible just in a state of disarray it just makes you sad you know i'm i'm sitting here thinking about it and i'm like there are certain things that i i w would like to not have tim burton to have done in yeah. that movie but, like, so much of it is just Tim Burton, right? Yeah. Um, and the, in a good way. Uh -huh. uh, so, I don't know. I don't know if this will hit what I want to hit, if it's going to miss, or what. I need more uh, backstory. But, yeah, I don't think it's going to hit where I want it to hit, because we're back at the same place again. Yeah. But well, I mean, I'm not saying I'm going to hate it. I just don't know. I mean, I don't really have any expectations. I haven't really given it that much thought, honestly. Yeah. I've been expecting it for years. I've been hearing about it for years. Well, uh, speaking of Beetlejuice, uh, I did finally watch The Flash. I, I don't really suggest anybody watch it unless you really want to see Michael Keaton reprise his role as well, that that would be the only reason i watch it and i would actually break my uh embargo on watching superhero shit right now that's the only reason i i sat through the whole thing and yeah is he I, I, a good deal fair amount doesn't it have more than one batman in it like they did with the spider-man well, I mean, that's the whole thing. This is, like, Barry is used to... I, I think they do, like, in the beginning, have um, Batfleck. Yeah, I was, I was thinking he was in it for a second, wasn't he? Right, yeah. Uh, and then, like, they switch over to another Batman. And it, which is Keaton. Not, oh, it is Keaton. Okay, I was going to say. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I was thrilled to bits that they brought him back, man. Uh, it's very good. I, yeah. I have problems with, you know, multiverse shit because it's just a...
fucking, you know, it's just, it's just easy to say a multiverse. And then, right. Okay. Okay. Fine. It's just too easy. Good blame Phil theory. It's too easy, man. What else we got? Well, some of the stuff's, uh, let's see. You, well, WB. Oh, yeah. WB 100th anniversary coming yeah. up this month. Yeah. Um, yeah, they're going to be re-releasing uh, the Goonies. Yay. Big deal there. I love uh, Goonies. And uh, Nolan's Dark Knight trilogy and select theaters. Uh, now, I don't know if this is just across the U.S. I would expect it's worldwide, but is this I'm also... Is this uh, fandom deals or whatever? You know what I'm talking about. The company that puts on these things. I forget. I'm not saying the whole name, I don't think. Hmm. It's like fan... Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, Anytime you see like a movie that's not from this period in time, like from way back or whatever, yeah. there's this one company that, that always does them, it seems like. As far as I can tell, this is WB because it is oh, okay. uh, tied to their 100th anniversary. Gotcha. Um, so, yeah, my, my question is like, you know, here in the States, obviously people are going to be like, yeah, give me some Goonies in the theater, right? That'd be cool. Maybe even the same with the Dark Knight trilogy because Heath Ledger, if nothing else. Mm, yeah, maybe. Um, but I, I wonder about other nationalities. Like, does Goonies hit differently in Europe well, or China? About, yeah. What about now too? I mean, like. Yeah. Yeah. I admit, did you? Is this just in America, or are you asking me that same? Question? That's what I'm saying. I don't know. Yeah, I bet um, it is. And I, will, I would be surprised if it isn't, or, yeah, if it were anywhere else. But I'm sitting here thinking about, like, the people that I know, if we were going to go watch a Goonies, or watch the Goonies in uh, a theater, some of them would be hard-pressed to not treat it like a viewing of The Room or some shit like that, right? They're going to be yelling at the screen... Uh, and I'm just kind of wondering if there's going to be a lot of shushing going on in those showings. Yeah. Because us old heads, we're just going to be laughing and like cutting, you know, cutting in and yelling shit out or whatever. And then there's a, a whole nother audience that has never seen this, right? Never. I saw it in the theater and I loved it. I came out of it being so excited. I wanted to go on an adventure right then and there. <laughs> My mom just laughed at me. Right. So it was Fathom Events is who I'm thinking of. Okay. And they, yeah, they put on stuff. Okay, so like They Live. I just watched that the other day. Great 35th movie. anniversary. Hmm. Going to be uh, from, uh, looks like September 3rd and September 6th. Nice. So I think you just check your local listings and like they just do this stuff. Like Christine, the 40th anniversary. Wow. September 10th, September 13th. Um, You'll have to shoot Rain that link Man. to me. Because, like, those first two were, like, movies I would love to go see in a theater. Yeah. And I've known... that. So, this company, the reason I know of them, like, they've brought Doctor Who to the big screen in the States for some stuff. Um, generally, if it's something that's on the big screen, these are the people putting it on. And, I mean, like, not from, you know, movie theater companies. Right. Normal companies. Like, they, they use... They have all kinds of stuff they do. Um just like I said, they'll bring television stuff to the big screen. I'm trying to see if there's anything bigger uh, coming out. Anyway, but yeah, that's <laughs> that's the name of it. By them. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, Goonies is cool. I, I think it's kind of weird. I, I have a feeling that they're not just doing the Goonies and the Dark Knight trilogy, but at the same time, Four weeks in a month, three in a trilogy plus Goonies. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I say, why not see? I like the idea of getting people back into the theaters by bringing out old shit. Yeah. I think it's a great I idea. And uh, they've been enticing me to want to go to the theaters this year just with a few movies. I have to give it to them. Like uh, the uh, Last Voyage of the Demeter. That really interested me in to go in the movie. Uh, I actually wanted to see Meg 2 in the movie. Huh. Okay. Yeah. Uh, they had something else. I can't remember what it was recently uh, besides those two. Oh, possibly Indiana Jones. I might have gone and seen that as well. 
Right. I'll be checking that out soon too. So I'll have a report hopefully next week or so whenever I actually watch it. I got the uh, last voyage of the Demeter as well, so I'll be watching that too. Okay. Looks like a great take on the the Dracula story because that is like you know a good part of the story that that you could tell, and I like that that they just took one part of the book and going to tell us what happened in the whole voyage. Yeah. Pretty cool. I agree. Um, Pornhub wins. Had to had to drop that in there. It is tech news, right? Yeah. They are a tech company. In in a roundabout way, yeah. Yeah. So uh yeah, they they won this uh thing. What the hell is going on? I'm experiencing technical difficulties. Testicle difficulties. So Pornhub wins age verification battle against Texas anti abortion bill. Right. Judge deemed Bill violates free speech laws. I'm slow oh, today. God damn it. So my uh I'm trying my, to figure out how Pornhub age verification and anti abortion all fit together. <laughs> right. Is this one of those things where they just crammed something into another bill? Maybe. It's Texas. And you know Texas likes to do a lot of those uh moral law shits. Yeah. Um, which is why a lot of the money that came into Texas is probably going to want to be getting out before too long. Here we go. Uh, but yeah, uh, apparently there was a bill that was trying to get age verification for porn sites, um, and a judge in a federal judge in Texas said, "Hey, that violates the First Amendment." That's all I know. <laughs> really? Yeah. Well. I had heard something about it, but I don't do porn, so I didn't know what was going on. Yeah, I mean, it's Pornhub is so prevalent, right? You see kids like playing the theme music. You see yeah. like all kinds of stuff, all kinds of memes involving it. So it, it's porn on the one hand, but on the same time, on the same at the same time, it's part of internet culture. Yeah. But yeah, that's all I had to say. I, I just thought it was yay for Pornhub, I guess. <laughs> yeah, good for Pornhub. I'm glad, you know, teens everywhere can spank their monkeys without worrying about being age verified. Right. Or, you know, um, diddle their clams if you do that kind of thing, too. I'm not just going to pick on the kids, the boys. There's this is... Uh, out there strumming their clam. I wanted to bring this up to you because, you know, freedom of speech is a big deal to you. And I think it it's is. a big deal to me, too, but I think it's a bigger deal to you. Um, and this kind of butts up against, I wouldn't call it a line, uh, but the, it's reasoning, thought process, understanding type of stuff. Um, of where it belongs and where it doesn't, right? Like, Like I said, I don't know the details of this case. All I know is some judge said... You can't ask for age verification. That violates free speech. I'm not sure how that works. Yeah, right? I'm not sure. I can wrap my head around that one, man. Exactly. So does it does it fit? Like, is this something I, I need to investigate more and see if it's fitting I, spe- or not? I mean, like, free speech. I mean, first of all, you're asking me a question. Right. And I'm answering it or not. How is that fucking free speech? I don't even get the... the uh, Maybe there's something about this that I need to read or something, but I just don't even understand how this even works. I, I'm the same way. and that, that, I wish I had had, that's just something I, I brought up in my feed today and I didn't have a chance to go through it. I would have liked to have before we started, but. It seemed like he could have come up with something better than that. Like, uh, it violates something else, like. Privacy know. laws? Yeah, like a privacy, yeah, like you don't need to know my age. How dare you? Or something like that. But free speech? I mean Yeah. Well, okay, okay. Maybe if I look at it from Pornhub's point of view, the judge is taken up for him because he's a real nasty and loves his porn. Right. Um Maybe he's looking at it like Pornhub has the right to show their porn without without being hindered by having to ask people whether they're eighteen or not. That's where the free speech is coming in, I suppose. Maybe. That's the only way I can see it. I mean, uh, I guess he's saying they have the right to show titties if they want to without a 
a banner or something to keep you out. Yeah. I agree. Let the titties be free. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. What what difference does it make? You're going to lie anyway. I don't even, under, I've never understood that thing. I mean, the leafy thing that I use to look up my different weed strains with. Ask me if I'm 21. Well, yeah, I have been for a long time, but so <laughs> what am I going to say? No. You yeah. know, like I don't want to see why I'm, I'm here for a reason. Mm. Why would I fucking shoot myself in the foot? It's just stupid, the age verification thing. Now, in the future one day, you know, and I don't want to say when, if we're wired up together. I really don't want to have that kind of intrusiveness into my life. But if we were wired up together, you know, maybe I could see that. Hey, but I'm throwing a link here in chat. I kind of derailed my train of thought there too. So oh, sorry, dude. I got my point across to what I was trying to say because I forgot what I was talking about halfway through. You were talking about, I, I guess, like something like Neuralink or whatever. You were talking about us being linked up. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So that's the only way. Like, so if it knew somehow that, that we were lying, you know, that, right. That's the only way they're going to know. So I, I've never understood age verification. You're going to uh, catch you see me. this link. I'm sorry. Do you catch that link in the chat? No, I didn't. Hold on. Uh, it's a little detail about the next pointer that I kind of wanted to have up when we start talking about it. I never know where I'm looking anymore. Uh, I think it's to the right of where we are. You'll see the little dialog box. Uh, did you put it in the chat for this thing? Oh, no. What did you do? Nah, I shouldn't have done that. Y'all hang on. Technical difficulties, technical difficulties. Whoa, that was crazy. Yeah, I uh, I clicked over on the wrong Discord and it sent my whole thing flying, so I paused this real quick there. To my save bad, guys. The I sent them a link to the wrong area. Yeah, so uh, we were talking about this uh, this Disney thing between uh, Disney and Charter. Brian's yeah. has been dying to talk about this one all day. He even brought it up in the Ahsoka episode. Yeah, well, I mean, it's it, it's weird because it... it, it to me, it, like this is not just a Disney and Charter issue. This is a. To me, it's a, a a pipeline issue, right? Like getting services from point A to point B, and you know the people providing the transport services want more access, and the people creating the product don't want to give that access. Well, we're in a unique time, I guess, with the streaming services, and that's what makes this different. Um, yeah. I don't know. It all just comes down to them all just being fucking greedy is what it comes down to. <laughs> you know, and I'm sorry for you people that have to get stuck and still on satellite and don't have anything else. You know, um, most of the time, well, that's not satellite. I'm sorry. That's, that's regular cable. But the same yeah. stuff applies to satellite. Um, so whether you're on cable or cable or on satellite you're going to run into these things because you know a lot of people have to deal with their locals not being on there for times um this shit happens all the bloody time yeah and well i mean it also touches know. on something that you and i have both complained about before and that is this idea that we have to you know you <laughs> In my opinion, if you want to be like in, into media, into like uh, you know, TV series, movies, production, any of that type of stuff, um, then you either have to pick your battles, or you have to subscribe to like six or eight different services uh, to catch all the good stuff, right? Yep. This is what I said was going to happen back in the day. Yeah. Uh, and I don't know. I, I can kind of see this going either way. It, it's pretty clear that the content belongs to Disney as now, and they're free to do whatever they want as far as access is concerned. Uh, but the American people are not happy with the access they're getting, and it's completely possible somebody like Congress could get involved. Yeah, well, it's high time that the cable and satellite companies went to an a la carte system. I mean, it's it's been way too long. They they could have been enjoying way more profits before streaming became a big thing. No. Long before that. And uh, 
it may be the only thing that, that I don't know. What do I fucking know? I mean, they, these people are just hungry for money. That's all it is. They don't give two shits on what you get to watch. Yeah. They're, you know, uh, you got Disney who, who wants you to see this shit. And Comcast, I'm not Comcast, uh, Charter could care less. Yeah. They just, they just want your money. Well, I I would put it a different way. They both just want your money. Disney wants you to pay them direct, but they do want to, you know, expand and diversify and allow you oh, to yeah. access I, it I in other ways to, if you can't. Yeah, I didn't want to make it seem like I didn't think Disney didn't want money either. That's right. not what I was saying. It's just um, Disney does want you to see their shit. Oh, yeah. Uh, and, you know, everybody's just trying to get a better deal, right? Charter, what did they say? Uh, they said something like, the current pay to play system is broken or, or something along yeah, those they lines. Do say that. Um which again uh, goes to the a la carte thing. You can change that up. Make yeah. it not the current system. It's a cable company, man. <laughs> it's amazing charter still around, honestly. Right, I agree. They, they, but at the same time it's not. It, it's generally what happens uh in any given field. Uh, especially once regulation starts to change, like once you get rid of stuff like net neutrality and whatnot, uh, the big wig makes big moves, and you know either there's a small nimble company out there that can stand toe to toe with them, or there's not, uh, and just one entity takes over. Yeah, I mean, but we've seen these cable companies around here go change names a hundred times over. I'm just surprised that they they haven't changed their name, honestly. <laughs> well, they did. It's Spectrum. Yeah, Charter Spectrum. Yeah, I guess I should have known better. Yeah. Well, they called it the Spectrum Server, that. but they still called Charter, though. Right. The company is still Charter, but yeah. as far as the customers are concerned, it's, it's Spectrum. Spectrum. Right, yeah. yeah. Bullshit. Yeah, it's I agree. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, so... You're not just losing like Ahsoka and stuff like that. That uh, they're losing access to ABC, ESPN, yeah, FX, X, yeah, everything. Uh, so yeah. some important and dude, stuff. And this is when you say ABC and ESPN, there's like ten of those, ten ESPNs, ten ABCs. You know, there's there's all kinds of shit. Yeah. Uh, you know, ABC Kids, ABC whatever. There's a fucking specific thing for everything. So yeah, you're FX, losing FX like two, fifty FX channels drama. just from this one thing, the Disney Channel, if that's still a thing. Yeah, you know, uh, that's a good question. I think it's still a thing. <laughs> I'm not sure. Um, but yeah. Anyway, yeah. What's this thing? What the, the killer? killer? Yeah. So it's David Fincher. Um, and I don't know. I, I guess you're probably familiar with him. Uh, obviously, he's known for stuff like uh, Seven, Fight Club, Gone Girl, Love stuff that like stuff. that. Yeah. Uh, and so the killer, I mean, it feels kind of like it's around his wheelhouse, but at the same time, it also feels like it's a genre that's so overdone. I really want to see what he would do with it. Yeah. Uh, so just he's because not he, doing it, or he you just no, he it? is. Okay. It's out. Okay. I think it's a. Uh, oh, what's his name? Fassbender. Um, Michael Fassbender. Yeah, he's playing like the killer. <laughs> uh, I just really want to see what he does with something like this because it butts up against you know, like I said, stuff like Seven and whatnot. Love that, Seven. Yeah. I love Michael. Um, he, he also did, did Zodiac. Really gritty look to him. Yeah, Zodiac too. Some about his movies, they have grit. Yeah, that's They're one of the reasons gritty. that everybody loves them. Yeah, it's very, very dirty. Everything, yeah. you know, like you just these cities they're in, you just feel like there's just fucking grit and grime everywhere, and uh, very hard people, very rough lives. Um, Agreed. Brutal fucking uh, murders and. Assaults and shit like that. Yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. I agree. Good stuff. So, yeah, I just wanted to mention that because it, it uh, at first I was thinking, I, I bought it up at first because I I think I was getting it confused with David Lynch, maybe. Yeah. Uh, and that sounded like something that was totally out of his wheelhouse. Yeah, but, definitely out of his wheelhouse. Uh, yeah, which is why that would have been amazing, right? Yeah, that would have been a whole other fucking weird deal. 
Uh, but you know, even with uh, Fincher, this uh, you remember Seven, you remember Zodiac, you remember mm-hmm. these movies. They were good movies. This is obviously going to be a good movie. The question is, is this going to be more or less like Leon or The Professional, uh, or is it going to be something totally new, or is it just going to be bullshit? Yeah. Hell, and Zodiac didn't even really have an ending. Like it's a, it's a story. <laughs> right. it doesn't even end, man. And it's still it's still a good movie. Yeah. So I don't know. I'm just uh, it's an uh, it's one of the few movies I'm excited about. Might have to check it out. I know we like those kind of things. So yeah. yeah. Well, good deal, man. Boy, we had a lot to say this episode. We did, yeah, and we good. ran it out too. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. But. uh yeah, I think we're going to wrap it up there and save save some for next week, whatever we got in us. And you guys save some of that another, for the after show. Yeah, you guys can catch another uh, reaction video when we do Ahsoka episode four. So until then, we really appreciate you guys joining us today. And we ask, as always, that you be excellent to each other. And Brian and I will see you on the flip side. Peace. Peace.